Hi there. Welcome to Crack Concepts. Today we'll be working with DAX in Power BI. In order to do that, we have to first load our data. The data I wish to use is a CSV data, so I would have to go to get data from another source, text or CSV, connect, and then follow the usual steps. Now that our data is loaded, we'll start working with DAX functions. DAX stands for Data Analysis Expression. Basically, it's used to perform advanced calculations within our visualizations. There are multiple use cases of a DAX function and there are numerous operators available to us. We'll start working with a few and then you'll see how advanced it can get slowly. First of all, let's add another page. Open the fields that we have. And you go here on the more options, click on it and say new measure. When you do that, this tab opens up. You may have noticed in Excel that there's this formula bar. The measure column is basically that in Power BI. First of all, you have to give a name to your DX formula, then press equals to. Your formula starts after equals to. Right now, I'll do a very simple DX formula that is define a constant, say 3, and press enter. Now, if I go on and create a table which shows me the sales across different states and I add this sample that I have just created, you'll see the value remain unchanged for the sample because of course it was a constant value that was defined. So that was a very simple way of working on your very first DX formula. Now we'll start making some advanced formulas. So let's say add another dashboard. Now let's say I want to find out out of all the customers, how many customers are unique. Basically, if for example, I get 500 customers in my store in a particular day, how many of them are repeating and how many of them are unique customers? So in order to do that, I'll go over here, once again, new measure, let's name it unique customer. You can give as many spaces and whatever name you want to give before you press the equal to. After that, you have to adhere to the guidelines of the DX function. Now, I want the unique values, so I'll type in distinct count. I got distinct count so let's press tab and now I have the list of all the columns. So all I have to do is search the column I'm looking for and then press tab again. I am looking for customer ID, tab and bracket close. Press enter. Now I have the number of unique customers. Let's construct a gauge graph out of this. Okay. So click on gauge. Let's make it bigger and my value is unique customer and my maximum value should be count of customer IDs. Now you can see from this gauge graph that there's a lot of customers that are repeat customers that is we have 686 customers which is hardly one fourth of the total customers that come. So we have a very good amount of repeating customers that bring business to our store. Finally, let's 
try and calculate the average profit all right so i'll go over here new measure avg profit equals to average again we get all the columns present so i'll go down and i search for profit track it over and press enter now i want a clustered bar chart for the same and i want the average profit based on different states so my states would be on the y-axis and average profit would be on the x-axis so this is how you can use different dx functions now there's an end number of DS, dx functions that and you can see what each of them does through this microsoft tabulation available all you have to do is go on to google type in dax power bi and you'll have this very first link where all the documentations are made for different dx tabulations so let's go over to dx overview and here you'll see all the types of different calculations available to you and you'll see that you have aggregate functions date time functions filter functions the best way to learn these is to play around with them in your visualizations and see how they feel and look to you. And that is it from our site. Thank you for watching Crack Concepts. If this video was helpful to you, please consider subscribing.